15. There was hurry and hest and hayo wrought now, for hands to bedeck it, and dense was the throng of men and women, the wine hall to cleanse, the guest room to garnish, gold ray shone the hangings, there were wove on the wall, and wonders many to delight each mortal that looks upon them, though braced within by iron clads. That building bright was broken sorely, rent were its hinges, the roof alone held safe and sound, when seared with crime the fiendish foe, his flight essayed, of life despairing. No light thing that, the flight for safety, essay it who will. Forced of fate, he shall find his way to the refuge ready for race of man, for sole possessors and sons of earth, and there his body on bed of death shall rest after revel. Arrived was the hour when to hall proceed Halafdeinu's son, the king himself would sit to banquet. Ne'er heard I of host and haughtier throng, more graciously gathered round, giver of rings. Bowed then to bench those bearers of glory, fain of the feasting, featly received many a mead cup, the mighty in spirit, kinsmen who sat in the sumptuous hall, Hrothgar and Hrothulf. Heorot now was filled with friends, the folk of Shildings, ne'er yet had tried the traitor's deed, to Beowulf gave the baron of Halef de Nu a gold-wove banner, guerdon of triumph, broidered battle-flag, breastplate and helmet, and a splendid sword was seen of many born to the brave one. Beowulf took cup and hall, for such costly gifts he suffered no shame in that soldier throng, for I heard of few heroes in hardier mood, with four such gifts so fashioned with gold, on the ale-bunch honoring others thus. O'er the roof of the helmet high, a ridge wound with wires, kept ward o'er the head, lest the relict of flies should fierce invade, sharp in the strife, when that shielded hero should go to grapple against his foes. Then the earl's defense on the floor bade lead coursers eight, with carven headgear adown the hall. One horse was decked with a saddle all shining and set in jewels. Twas the battle seat of the best kings, when to play of swords the son of Halaf de Nu was fain to fare. Never failed his valor in the crush of combat when corpses fell. To Beowulf over them both then gave the refuge of Ingwine's right and power. O'er water steeds and weapons wished him joy of them. Manfully thus the mighty prince, hoard guard for heroes, that hard fight repaid with steeds and treasures, contemned by none who is willing to say the sooth all right. 16. And the lord of earls to each that came with Beowulf over the briny ways, an heirloom there at the ale bench gave, precious gift, and the price bade pay in gold for him whom Grendel erst murdered, blank and fain of them more had killed. Had not wisest God with word averted, and the man's brave mood? The Maker then ruled humankind as here and now. Therefore is insight always best, and forethought of mind. How much awaits him of leaf and of loaf, who long time here, through days of warfare, this world endures? Then song and music mingled sounds in the presence of Halaf de Nu's head of armies, and harping was heard with the hero lay, as Hrothgar's singer the hall joy woke along the mead seats, making his son of that sudden raid on the sons of Finn. Halaf de Nu's hero, Knaf the Shilding, was fated to fall in the Frisian slaughter. Hilda Birch needed not hold in value her enemy's honor. Innocent both were the loved ones she lost at the linden play. Bairn and brother, they bowed to fate, stricken by spears. Twas a sorrowful woman. None doubted why the daughter of Hoke bewailed her doom when dawning came, and under the sky she saw them dying, kinsmen murdered, where most she had kenned of the sweets of the world. By war were swept two Finn's own liegemen, and few were left in the parley place. He could ply no longer weapon, nor war could he wage on Hengist, and rescue his remnant by right of arms from the prince's thane. A pact he offered, another dwelling the Danes should have, hall and high seat, and half the power should fall to them in Frisian land. 
and at the fee gifts Folkwald's son, day by day the Danes should honor, the folk of Hengest favor with rings, even as truly with treasure and jewels, with fretted gold, as his Frisian kin, he meant to honor an ale hall there. Pact of peace they plighted further, on both sides firmly. Finn to Hengist with oath upon honor, openly promised that woeful remnant, with wise men's aid, nobly to govern so none of the guests by word or work should warp the treaty, or with malice of mind bemoan themselves as forced to follow their free giver's slayer, lordless men as their lot ordained. Should Frisian, moreover, with foeman's taunt that murderous hatred to mind recall, then edge of the sword must seal his doom. Oaths were given, and ancient gold heaped from hoard, then hardy shielding battle thane best on his balefire lay. All on the pyre were plain to see the gory sark, the gilded swine crest, boar of hard iron, and atheling many slain by the sword. At the slaughter they fell. It was Hildebert's hest at Hnaf's own pyre, the bairn of her body on brands to lay, his bones to burn on the baleful place at his uncle's side. In sorrowful dirges bewept them, the woman, great wailing ascended, then wound up to welkin the wildest of death fires, roared o'er the hillock, heeds all were melted, gashes burst, and blood gushed out from bites of the body. Baleful devoured, greediest spirit, those spared not by war out of either folk, their flower was gone. 17. Then hastened those heroes, their home to see, friendless to find the Frisian land, houses and high burge. Hengist still, through the death-dyed winter, dwelt with Finn, holding pact, yet of home he minded, though powerless his ring-decked prow to drive over the waters, now waves, rolled fierce, lashed by the winds, or winter locked them in icy fetters. Then fared another year to men's dwellings, as yet they do, the sun-bright skies that their season ever dully await. Far off winter was driven, fair lay earth's breast, and fain was the rover, the guest, to depart, though more gladly he pondered on wrecking his vengeance than roaming the deep and how to hasten the hot encounter where sons of the Frisian were sure to be. So he escaped, not the common doom, when Hun, with laughing the light of battle, best of blades, his bosom pierced. Its edge was famed with the Frisian earls. On fierce heart Finn there fell likewise, on himself at home the horrid sword death, for Guthlaf and Aslaf of grim attack had sorrowing told, from seaways landed mourning their foes. Finn's wavering spirit bowed not in breast, the burge was reddened with blood of foemen, and Finn was slain, king amid clansmen, the queen was taken, to the ship the shielding warriors bore all the chattels the chieftain owned, whatever they found in Finn's domain of gems and jewels. The gentle wife, o'er paths of the deep, to the Danes they bore, led to her land. The lay was finished, the gleeman's song. Then glad rose the revel, bench joy brightened, bears draw from their wonder vats wine. Comes Walch Theo forth, under gold crown goes where the good pair sit, uncle and nephew, true each to the other one, kindred in amity. Unfirth the spokesman at the shielding's lord feet sat. Men had faith in his spirit, his keenness of courage, though kinsmen had found him, unsure at the sword play. The shielding queen spoke, Quaff of this cup, my king and lord, breaker of rings, and blithe be thou, gold friend of men, to the gaiots here speak, such words of mildness as man should use, be glad with thy gaiots, of these gifts be mindful, or near or far, which now thou hast. Men say to me, as son thou wishest yon hero to hold, thy hay-wrought purged, jewel-hall brightest, enjoy while thou canst with many a largest, and leave to thy kin, folk, and realm, when forth thou goest to greet thy doom. For gracious I deem my Hrothulf, 
willing to hold and rule nobly our youths, if thou yield up first, prince of Shildings, thy part in the world, I ween with good he will well requite offspring of ours, when all he minds that for him we did in his helpless days of gift and grace to gain him honor. Then she turned to the seat where her sons were placed, Hrethik and Hrothmund, with heroes' bairns, young men together, the Gaiat too sat there, Beowulf brave, 